All right, in this video, we're going to rebut the narrative uh, that COPA's putting out regarding the COPA v. Wright case, and then also give an update here about the interviews coming up here with uh, Daniel Kravitz, going to be tomorrow. Uh, we talked about Michael Michael Middleton yesterday. I want to talk mention about that, and then also update with Zem Gao, and then also what's uh, going on with the Coin Geek stuff with Alex Moon and Kurt. So, all right, so check this out. You know, there's uh, you know very limited uh, coverage regarding the Copa case. It seems like you know for as big of a deal that it is on a almost a trillion dollar market cap. I'm surprised that it's not more widely covered, um, you know, and, and perhaps that I'm just not getting the coverage. I'm not seeing it. Uh, that's possible. But the, the limited stuff that's out there, there's a YouTube channel. It's called Dr. Bitcoin, the man who wasn't Satoshi. It's, it's clearly uh, what's, it's, what's called, uh, uh, it's an opinion piece. Okay. Now, granted, when, when we're talking about, you know, and I, and I, I it's a uh, Mark and Arthur. Okay. Hats off for the guys for doing it. I appreciate it. I actually, I actually enjoy the commentary and learning about from some other perspectives. So I, I and absolutely applaud them for the sportsmanship, you know, but uh, you know, in a real like reporting sense, I mean, we got, we get fake news put on us our whole life guys, at least in here in the U S guys, I mean, CNN has been played in the airports nonstop around the clock for me. And it's like, I, I hear it, you know, there it is again, opinion, opinion, opinion. I just really want to get the facts as to what's going on and what the, what the rulings say and what's happening and all the opinion stuff. Hopefully I can, you know, shed, you know, remove some of that here. I, I, I do my best. So, um, but you know, the bottom line here, but, but these guys are, are, you know, doing a good job at getting the information out there about the case that's coming up. However, there's a big, uh, you know, lack of understanding of the rules of evidence. Now I get it. They probably never been to court. Maybe had a traffic ticket. All right. But after you go to court and you, and you're involved in 50, 60 or hundred different appearances, like I have. Okay. You, you begin to learn because you get punched in the face and then you get punched in the face again and you keep losing. You keep getting until you, you're almost knocked out and you get back up again. Right. But until you actually get in there and learn, or you become a practicing an attorney, learning the rules of evidence is a hard you know, hurdle to get to. It's not just like, oh, rules of evidence. Yeah, no big deal. No, it's not that easy. And, you know, uh, these guys here, Mark and Arthur, hats off, there's just a fundamental lacking of understanding of the rules of evidence, all right? And these rules of evidence are universal. It's not just a uh, here in U.S. or in the U.K. The, the U rules of evidence are universal. And in order for this evidence that they call evidence, uh, bringing what they call false stuff, these are all to be determined. And even if the do, even if what they call evidence is, is submitted, it's, you know, it still has to be decided if it's going to be even looked at, all right, by the court. We don't know. This rules of evidence thing is a complex subject and nothing that's being said preliminary from any, from these guys or anybody else has been decided yet. And I just want to rebut one of the things that they mentioned, this is a video they put out today. It's pineapple hack trial update. I'm bringing this up because they, they, they shouted out to me in one of their last videos and I, and I compliment them for that. So I'm up for the gentlemanly and friendly discussion and I would be happy to sit down and have a debate, you know, with them or, or a discussion. I'm totally open to that. I, I mean, they're probably not going to take me up on that, but that's fine. Uh, Arthur Ben Pelt, he blocked me, he, you know, as spam, uh, for whatever reason, that's fine. Uh, but here's the bottom line. They're saying in this, uh, thing basically in this video here that the judge rules on preliminary trial to determine the tool of trading has brought a false case i mean i'm not sure what case that was about um not the copa case okay i'm not sure which one they're you know they're talking about there's no been no ruling about craig or the tool of tra trying bringing uh making a preliminary determination about tulip trading bringing a false case i, I mean, that has not been determined okay in fact, to the contrary, if we remember just a couple of videos, you know, a week ago or so ago, we read through the actual, what the, what the words said from the court and the, and the court's words himself, he specifically said, ah, oh, yes, COPA really wants me to make a, uh, a determine, a determination on a preliminary ruling, a pretrial ruling. However, counsel from right has re ecstatically like objected to that and opposed that and cited all sorts of authority 
to to the court about not making a pretrial determination. And the court said, I'm going to honor that. I'm not going to go against the authority and make any pretrial determination. These things need to be determined at trial. Therefore, there has been no pretrial determination. All right. Secondly, you know, the, the uh, documents, um, again, I'm not going to be one to bring up opinions that I have any clue about these documents because I don't, and I'm not educated and nor do I think anybody on the internet is because it's, it's really yet to be determined for what's going to be looked at in the case, what's going to be brought into evidence and what isn't that is still to be determined. So that's a big question mark. Uh, so we don't know. They, they could totally, Copa could totally, you know, yeah, they could win. They could have the, the silver bullet on their side, but we've already brought forward the, what, what, uh, what it appears to be a possible silver bullet for the right side. We don't know. We don't know. All right. But they're saying that now this, what was the last piece of document about this, uh, what the white paper was written in is now um, in this special latex files format. Again, the other side's objecting to it. They're going to say that it's, that it is what it's not that it's something else. You know, they have the right to do that, but that's going to have to be determined by the court as to whether or not it is valid or not. And if it's determined valid, Again, it's not yet. We don't know. It could be, could be false. We don't know. If it's determined valid, that looks like enough to go ahead and seal the deal. All this other stuff about... Uh, see, there's a lot of a hearsay right now and objections about things that have happened in the past and other documents. You know, there's so many things floating around on Twitter right now with false documents floating around from, from the case and from BlackRock. I mean, people forge documents on the internet all the time, okay? Now... They're trying in this case, uh, the other side, they're trying to say that, that Dr. Wright forged all these documents. That has to be determined, okay? And that's what rules of evidence are going to determine all about. Because just because I found something here on Twitter about some, some forgery from BlackRock doesn't mean BlackRock's going to make a, you know, come on. That's not, has nowhere near the rules of evidence. And until somebody gets a real grasp on that, they're going to make these types of uh, statements that, uh, you know, the... A preliminary ruling is, and, and there's been a, a false case has been determined. And these things are, these are conclusions that are, are, uh, you know, totally not, <laughs> they're, they're, la they're lacking foundation and they're lacking rulings from the courts. So, you know, hopefully that just do a quick rebuttal on that. Now, let me just talk about tomorrow. I've got uh, Daniel Kravitz coming on. He's going to be the guy who coined the concept of hyper Bitcoinization. He was a BTC guy, as far as I know, uh, up until BTC forked away and, you know, into its, you know, whatever it is now with the SegWit protocol and the one megabyte blots and the seven transactions a second onto outside the, you know, the developers basically did a totally different protocol. So they're doing, he was with that until that all happened. And he started, you know, researching it. He, he coined the hyper Bitcoinization uh, concept years ago in 2014 in a blog. I really want to know exactly how it applies to now, how it's changed, you know, and you know, what's, what's going on in inflation. It looks like we might be in hyperinflation right now. Uh, some experts say that this is hyperinflation. It's just not rampant hyperinflation like Zimbabwe, but we might be in it. You know, I mean, these are just like things that I would really want to know about what his perspective is and also how Bitcoin, the BTC, uh, you know, how is there, is it also relate to the BTC flipping to the BSV? Is that a part of hyper Bitcoinization? There's just a lot to, of questions I want to know from a, his, seems like a, a subject matter expert, you know? I mean, I, I think of Daniel Kravitz as kind of like the, um, the antro, you know, the truthful, honest, andro, andro op, Antonopoulos, an, an, antro Antonopoulos guy, who was, who really had some great stuff. And I actually saw his book today at the, at the freaking library and I almost bought it, but then I'm thinking, yeah, this guy also, you know, you know, he's, 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 he's not putting out all the narrative. I'd like to get all the information from people. You know, if you're going to put out information, don't just give me your opinion. Give me the information. Let me make my own decision. Don't just say, oh, that's a fraud. A fraud is a, a legal conclusion that it that takes six, six elements to, to meet in a court of law. And calling someone a fraud is like a cop out, you know? Oh, you know, that's just, I have low, you know, usually it's a very low, uh, education or definitely somebody who's never been to court had no experience in the, in the legal system if they're using that word because fraud is like the the judge laughs when he hears the word fraud you know it's so unusual to be able to prove and hard to prove stuff like that um and meet those elements it's usually just a cop out so i wish that andrew antonopoulos would would come forward and and bring the facts you know and bring uh foundation of why btc is uh 
is a better is 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 fulfilling and satisfying the white paper and it's satisfying the vision of Bitcoin and how it's it's operating, you know, prop. I would love to learn that. I, I'm open to it. However, why is it that we need did did build was Bitcoin built so that we could just use another protocol called Litecoin? Is that is that was that the intent? We're supposed to or light lightning network, excuse me? Is that was that the intent, you know? Reason they put he put Bitcoin out so we can use Lightning Network. I mean, is that really the argument? How, where's the logic in that? I'm just, I would wish I could get an answer from somebody like Andrew Antonopoulos. And so, that, anyways, my point is, is that Daniel Kravitz seems to be a more of a, a straight shooter, and he's going to come out. I, I don't know the guy. That's my perspective. That he's going to give us a, a much more technical perspective on things, without all the, um, with actually the full picture, you know, and the full narrative. Um, because I, he's got a lot of experience, man. I mean, I mean, I really respect someone with that much experience in the space and been in it this long and coming from a technical perspective, which is a totally opposite side of the coin where I'm at. I'm really wanting to learn all that technical stuff. And, and, uh, the other one is Zem Gao. He's not going to, um, looks like going to stipulate to an interview and that's fine. You know, I respect that. Uh, he said, we'll, we'll see, we'll see each other again at the next conference. So, um, you know, he's probably under some, some sort of, uh, you know, I, he probably knows more about this case than he's allowed to talk about. He said in his, in his message back to me, he says, I've already said enough. Uh, I've probably already said way too much in the case about the Copa case already. He says, uh, especially I cannot talk about the Copa case beyond what I've already written and which I've already said too much. <laughs> so I would love to talk to him about some outside the Copa case. Uh, if he's open to it, I would love to talk about the patent stuff about end chain and the effect of the validity of the patents. He's a patent attorney. We don't have to talk about the Copa case. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, he's obviously got some sort of, uh, something involved in it. He knows some stuff and he's not allowed to talk about it. Uh, that being said at Michael Middleton on yesterday, which was pretty, uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I'm getting a lot of feedback from people who enjoyed his perspective, really, uh, very back wise background in taxes, property taxes. I wasn't expecting that came out of nowhere. And, you know, that's a subject matter that I have another group, a private membership association that we deal in other legal matters, you know, legal concepts. Uh, and that, that, that subject has come up. That's why I kind of mentioned I would, I talked about it offline, but yeah, maybe we should just bring it forward on this channel anyways, and just get, get the word out there because there's so much, uh, uh, more on the legal side, the, the legal front that can be brought forward if people are really interested in that, you know, um, but, you know, bottom line was, yeah, Michael Middleton was good. The other thing was Alex Moon reached out to me on Twitter. I'll close this down. I keep looking at it. You know, he, he says that, uh, that the trials pushed back. So he wants to continue, you know, my talk on the coin, uh, my talk on the coin to eat with Kirk till sometime later on when the trial gets started. So we'll see what, uh, what that means. Uh, that's what he said. So we're not doing it on the, on the 9th of January, which is next week. That's not happening. It's going to be, uh, some other time. So that being said, you know, I'm sure that value, man. I went down to the law, to the library today. It's actually a bookstore. And I'm just like thirsting for knowledge, man. Uh, I love just like we want to soak it up. You got so much knowledge and being able to comprehend reading, uh, training yourself on reading a lot is, is a really fun thing to have. So I just, I bought a bunch of books, half price books. I mean, I got a whole slew of books, all these, you know, some Napoleon Hill stuff. And then also just like, you know, concepts on personal growth and development, legal stuff, uh, you know, background on other procedures that I'm just going to zip through them, man, and, and add as much value as I can to this channel, you know, and, uh, man, health is on another level. I'll tell you that right now. My health is on a freaking another level running sprints every single day. Uh, right now doing carnivore, staying lean, fit, healthy. I feel like my age is freaking locked right in at a, at a backwards almost right now. So, but the bottom line is I just wanted to get the message out there about the, uh, this COPA trial. It's yet to be determined. Understand the rules of evidence is the key. Until we, we really get our heads around the rules of evidence, people who are, are talking about the case, about things that have been determined or, uh, false things, or these are, these are just, uh, conclusions and opinions. All right. So we're going to have to hold off on any of that stuff until the court happens and there's a determination because getting things into evidence and what we see on the internet just ain't the same thing not even close all right so 
really, really exciting stuff on that case though for what they are going to let in. Now they are going to let in those latex files. Hmm. That's going to be determined at trial. That'll be heard. It seems to be substantial. So really exciting stuff, man. In the whole Bitcoin space. When I say Bitcoin, I mean Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin SV. And that'll be a really exciting ruling to see what happens. I mean, imagine if the freaking court orders the other side, uh, I'm sorry, the COPA and those guys not to use the name Bitcoin anymore in the passing off claim. I mean, it's just monumental. Okay, I've talked about it a bunch of times. And I think that's what these other guys are all scared of. I don't know why they're so scared. There's nothing to be scared about. I mean, it just is what it is. If you're holding BTC, you gotta, you're holding a huge, a huge risk. That's all. You're just, you're just in, a, in, a, in a major risk right now. If you like being, you like playing with firecrackers and, you know, rattlesnakes, hold that BTC, you know, great. Hold it. Yeah. Hodl, hodl it. You know, you're holding a, uh, if you like lit firecracker. So, you know, I mean, it, it could go up to the moon. I could, <laughs> I really don't know, but at the same time, it could totally go away. All right. So that's what's on the, on at stake here for this case, 16 minutes on the video. All right. I didn't mean to ramble that long, but, uh, watch tomorrow. Daniel Kravitz coming at you. It's going to be exciting. I'm really freaking looking forward to that. So stay tuned for that one tomorrow and we'll see you at the very top.